So welcome everybody. Um, I'm Olivia from DIA. I'm joined today by um, Chris Benstead, who many of you know. Um, and I'll ask Chris in a moment to just sort of give, give himself a little bit of a, an intro. We have provided one on the screen for those of you who want to have a little read. Um, and um, we're going to talk about a few things today um, that, you know, are common ADI um, issues, challenges, perhaps. Um, and what we want to do is say, yes, OK, we know um, that the challenges exist. Uh, maybe some of them didn't before. Um, but what we want to do is speak with an expert like Chris um, and who runs a successful driving school and just say, you know, look, guys, what are sharing ways of best practice? You know, some of you listening in might have ideas and solutions, you know, how to maybe overcome them um, in a different way, something that maybe you haven't thought trying before. Let's see how the conversation goes. So we want to kind of look into things as more into more of a, a, a positive spin on things as best as we can in this current climate. So, um, okay. So um, Chris, a little bit of an introduction. I don't know if you want to just sort of say a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, I say, I, I always start with, I'm just an ADI. And I think um, it's only the other ADIs that really appreciate what that means, which means that you do a bit of everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, we run with Ian Brett, run uh, Better Driver Training in Kent and South East London. Um, we've got a number of cars out on the road. Uh, and, uh, you know, I also am guiltily responsible for starting uh, the uh, driving instructor uh, Facebook group. Uh, which is known as the dark side so i always feel the need to apologize for that one um but uh, that's where a lot of people know me from is from facebook but say so, out out there you know d doing the job um although since lockdown i haven't been well, i've been focusing on running the driving school because i think as everybody's found there's some real challenges going on and it's it's difficult and and people aren't uh, accepting that difficulty necessarily they're you know trying to act as if everything's fine and it's challenging times. So we're, we're definitely trying to solve some of those problems and, and help our instructors and other instructors that we work with. Fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Um, OK, so let's have a little look at some of the items that we're going to look at today. So um, human factors, um, which are there all the time. We can't get around that. But what additional kind of issues and challenges might we be facing at the moment? Um, diary management managing the pupil expectations and we'll have a little look around self-isolation because I think Chris you said that you were getting quite a number of um, queries on this one yourself weren't you through your groups so um, uh, that that's something which we'll we'll have a little look at on that on that yeah. basis yeah okay fantastic so um, all right so human factors um, so what the new normal is looking like for driving school um, and what the main daily challenges are um, in regards to these sort of areas here. So, um, Chris, what, what have you got any um, updates or um, points on there that you are finding from your driving school that you wanted to raise on that? I think as soon as this started, um, you know, we were all chomping at the bit, so when can people go back to work and, and all that sort of thing, um, it became very apparent that the big challenge was going to be the most obvious one. And the most simple one, which was, you know, the the just the the facts about your everyday um, going out there and, and doing it. It wasn't about the lessons. ADIs are really good at delivering lessons. It was about where can you find a toilet. It was about where can you clean your hands. You know, when you when you're out and about. And it it was those factors that really, you know, you didn't know until you started doing it. Which coffee shops were going to be open to you know to grab a drink or something to eat while you're out there um you know where can you find the toilets that are accessible and safely accessible so you're not um, you know, increasing your risk by trying to do it and that haven't got a queue coming out the door of, of tesco's or sainsbury's when you've only got a certain amount of time between between lessons i think they they were the things that really jumped out and i think the, the dbsa will say that they were the things that they got asked the most about as well it wasn't so much how are the tests going to work. They'd solved that as a as a process. Um, it was, can we have access to the toilets, please? What are yeah. we going to do if, if it rains? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as I say, the, the loo issue has been resolved, thankfully. Um, and um, 
where there have been night reports, um, a couple of places where, you know, the people have said, oh, we, you know, the, we couldn't use the loo, but they, they've hopefully now been sorted out. Um, but um, that's, it is the DVSO's, you know, policy now to have access to the loo's on request so that that's great but as you say chris it's all of those things isn't it it's all of those where can you grab a drink where can you pop to the loop like you say you know a lot of supermarkets possibly a little bit less so now but it's still mm -hmm. one where they're queuing out the door um and you you just haven't got time for that where, especially you know this is more um more appropriate or, or more, more relevant, should we say, when um, you're not training in the area that you're living in. Because obviously, if you're sort of fairly near to home, then there's an obvious solution to that. Um, so, um, you know, just, just finding out from people, um, you know, and finding out where you can where you can go. I mean, obviously, local knowledge, local area and things like that, that, that will all help. But you don't know what that queue is going to be like on that day. So um, is that what a lot of your um, instructors have been doing, Chris? Have they been nipping home and doing things like that to try and overcome this? I, I think that the schedule's changed. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm now answering lots of questions from uh, from customers that are phoning up and they're they're looking for the evening and weekend lessons that aren't being delivered as as readily um out there now so you know the people are changing the way that they're working they're working a few less hours they're having bigger gaps between those between those lessons so yeah. to allow to allow for more cleaning to allow for the, the trying to find somewhere to you know to go and have their comfort break um and and they're, they're adapting how they're working because of that and mm. as you say if you're near home yes brilliant you can knit there you can you know you, you can fit in your breaks around around that um but if you're not in the area there's some real challenges it's always been an issue but some of the ones you know that that were you know an easy option before um at one of our local coffee shops that all of our instructors use because it's effectively our office um, if we're going to be found anywhere, it's there. But they're, you know, eat out only, and you know, therefore you you can't nip in and use the loo. Um, so, it, until you're doing it, I don't think people knew necessarily, you know, how it was going to work. And and then the grapevine starts to happen. But we all know that the ADI grapevine revolves around test centres. Um, so if you've only then got one instructor at a time at the test centre, you know, you might cross paths with one other, the message doesn't get, you know, transmitted as easily. So we're having people sharing toilets in the same way that they used to share pupils and share um, test availability, that they're saying, you know, here, here's one that's really useful, um, that you can nip in, and parking for them as well, that's the other issue. Yes. Is, you know, it's trying to find somewhere you can, you can just, you don't want to be spend, spending I was going to say spending a lot of pennies. You don't want really to be spend, spending <laughs> you know, a lot of money on parking just to nip in and use the loo. So yeah. try, trying to find places that are, are practical like that, it's, it takes us back to when we first started doing this job, I think, and, uh, yeah. and some of the lessons we had to learn, um, which I always quite like. I, I quite like having to revisit these things and, and uh, yeah. it makes you, makes you appreciate where you've, where you've got to. I think so. I think you're right. And this this is where I think that it's good to sometimes look at and reevaluate where you are. You know, where are you in your business? And um, a lot of people have had that time uh, to do that and look back and look at the business and think, actually, that that was never really working for me. Um, so I'm going to make that permanent change or, you know, I am going to have a slightly bigger gap between lessons so I can have a bit more of a break for myself because, you know, I know from personal experience as well, going out there, you know, leaving home at half seven or whatever in the morning coming back at sort of seven eight o'clock nine o'clock at night um and you know just being out all day sort of not back to back all the day but for a lot of the day it it, it, it really does take a toll on you um and also you know you've got to consider whether it's affecting also it's, it's a very um a very blunt question but is it, is it affecting you know the quality of your training because you're human, you know, you're going to get tired, you're going to get a bit more impatient than perhaps that you would. So having this time to think, actually, you know, I might start a bit earlier, um, I might have a slightly longer day, or I might have, 
less lessons over uh, more days you know it's just whatever pattern it's it's what everyone's working that out aren't they to see you know what what's actually best for me and maybe just get a bit more time um in there for for, for them as well um that's one thing that's come out of this pandemic isn't it it's people sort of being kind to themselves looking after themselves a bit more and lots of people have um you know look, are looking to do that and it's very difficult when you're an adi because you're very time poor in that respect or you can be um but um yeah to kind of draw some new boundaries for you for your business um might be what a lot of people have started to do some people i've spoken to have said that that's what they're doing um and it's actually in some cases actually working quite a lot better for them so um okay yeah. um sorry carry on chris i, I was just going to say the, the other factor um that you've touched on there it's been really apparent over the last um sort of week or so with the heat is that you know masks have this um ability of stopping you drinking but yeah. obviously the you know the the toilet issue is makes people think i don't want to drink too much as well um so uh, there's that drying out factor that you get so people yeah. are suffering from dehydration a lot and finding that they're having to factor that in because you know if, if you're dropping your mask to have a drink then you're, you're you know increasing your risk that way so trying to allow for those those things of having a drink um and being able to you know, to keep yourself hydrated, especially in, in the heat. Uh, I think that that is an additional factor that, that people haven't you know, weren't that, necessarily ready for. No, that's right. I mean, that heat has been really bad, isn't it? I mean, you know, lovely, lovely weather in one respect, but really not practical for what we're doing. Um, and you say that the face mask and all the rest of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, dehydration is a big is a big factor i mean it will lead to basic things like you know concentration you know things like that um and you know your mood won't it so you you might end up getting not brattier than usual or, or having a slightly quicker temper than usual um you know again human factors things that affect absolutely every single one of us um but uh, it's it's so important it can you know it can lead to big bigger health problems as well can't it if it's more long term yeah. so you've um you know it's really that exercising that self-care as well and making sure that you're you know healthy as you can be to to, to continue uh, working um as you are yeah definitely and and i, th I think it is we, we all hear about the instructors that have kidney issues and, and you know and, and other issues that come from the fact that they're not necessarily eating as well as they could and they're not keeping themselves hydrated so you know especially if you know, if you're you're at risk of potentially having time off due, due to to the pandemic, you you don't want to be also at risk of having time off due to other issues that could have been prevented by by just looking after yourself. Um, and you know, think of the state of the garden with the heat as well. Everybody spent yeah. you know, what, four four months getting their gardens looking lovely, and that's what I saw across Facebook for four months. Yeah. Was my my gardens never looked so good. Yes. Unfor unfortunately, this this heat. Um, and, right, uh, isn't it? It's really finished it off. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All that, all that hard work, and uh, yeah, it's all, it's all gone down. It's all gone down the pan, isn't it? Um, okay, so um, hand washing. I think we've covered things like that. I mean, obviously, you know, it's used that high alcohol gel. Um, you know, the, those hand um, or viral wipes um, where where you can, those wipes where you can, or the, the gel with the higher alcohol content. Um, I think that's been the, 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 the advice that they're, they're better for you in terms of, you know, cleaning off germs and things. Um, and um, the PPE factor, yeah. So, I mean, what do you know what sort of PPE your your instructors are using, Chris? Are they, um, are they using a mixture yeah. of different things or are they all kind of along the same lines? It, it, I think with everybody, we, we've got our company approach to it. And our company approach has been... Uh, wearing masks unless there's a medical reason not to and we've got one instructor who is uh, technically exempt although she's wearing it you know wherever she can um, depends on how she is that day and um, we've got sanitizer that is you know um, covid suitable uh, to be cleaning the cars down and then hand gels as well and, and taking that approach really of just being as sensible as possible and then having the windows open um, you know having the airflow trying to build in gaps to the lessons just taking that that really holistic view of things of going look we'll work together and what i love is that it really fits in with uh, the the standards check form if you have a look through that and think about that from a covid perspective it's working with the person sat next to you it's controlling the risks 
and it's making sure that you both understand what's expected of you and and that that you know ap appeals to me i like it when things fit yeah. into a nice, a nice box absolutely yeah because it's, it's it's all about understanding the responsibility sharing sharing it amongst yourselves as appropriate yeah absolutely you, you can mark yourself on that sheet as to how you're doing with your with your PPE and your COVID prevention. So uh, <laughs> that's a yeah. new on it, Chris. I like it. <laughs> I've got a sad, a sad life, haven't I? <laughs> no, I, I love it. <laughs> you're talking to a convert, definitely. <laughs> you about uh, anything else to add on that one, Howard? I can. <laughs> yeah, there's um, there's something I've done. One of the questions we've had actually is um, about the use of air conditioning. We're talking about you know, driving with the windows open, et cetera, which is what the government advice has been in the, uh, up till now. But there's now evidence from the King's College uh, Hospital um, Research Foundation that came out this week that, um, in fact, in cars, using air conditioning, because it's such a small area, is not such a big risk. It's the big areas where there are big chambers that has to recycle air and chuck it back out again are the big problems. But providing um, air con can be used in cars is what they're saying, providing it is turned off uh, at certain uh, when need needed and windows are put down for everything to air. So you might think, well, hang on, we're air con in car to cool it down, to open the windows, to let all the heat back in again. But the thing is, the thing with COVID is the environment has got to air and air conditioning doesn't actually air an area, it recycles the air that is in it. So air con can be used to reduce the temperature in the car. Once that temperature is down, should be turned off for a while, windows open to vent, and then at some time or other, you can turn the air con on. Um, that's what um, has come out of the King's College, and they are one of the major researchers for COVID for the government. And uh, Mike, Mike, Chris Whitty, the, the chief medical officer, I think it's Chris Whitty, he takes a lot of his information from Oxford University Research Foundation and the King's College Hospital in terms of the COVID research. So everyone, we've, we've always in the past, up to now, said, no, don't use your aircon, but it's actually, um, there's a little bit of a relaxation on that now. So uh, yes, vent the car still, but aircon can be used to a limited addition in a car but for a classroom they're still frowning on it so if you're doing classroom training that's still frowned on i think there are two additional factors there howard aren't there there's the what you you sort of touched on it about the the recirculate so recirculated air if you've got that button to recirculate you, the air inside your car that should not be used um it needs to be pulling in fresh air from outside um, and also, it's not the most efficient use of aircon. I mean, hopefully the temperatures are sort of on the way down a bit now. It's considerably a bit cooler today. But um, if you've got, if you absolutely, you know, you, to save your sanity, you need to have a bit of AC on. Then make sure it's sucking in from outside, not recirculating. And maybe I know it's not the most efficient use of it, and it's not going to do your fuel any good. But um, maybe crack the windows open a little bit as well and and you know when you are in that car just try and keep those wheels moving to keep that airflow through the car but you've got a bit of that coolness coming through as well obviously it's down to everyone's individual um just you know it's down to your um in, in individual decisions what you wanted to do but that that, that could be a, a form of a compromise if it gets you know too bad that you can't just the the, the fresh air alone coming in is, is not working but we do have an onus, though, to to create an, an environment for learning. Yeah. So we do have to make that comfortable for people. And uh, now you've got the added use of air con, which can be used in limited supplies. Um, that should help your students keep concentration going if the temperature is set down a bit more now. But you still have to air the vehicle so they get the air in to keep the the brain clear you know if they say you, you don't think properly about oxygen so we do need to have the the, the cars vented as well yes balancing all the all the facts yeah. and all the risks yeah. and thinking, okay and using a real good dollop of common sense with it all as well bearing in mind like you said howard it's that ventilation it's keeping the wheels moving it, it's it's that airflow through the vehicle that is is absolutely essential um brilliant anything else to add on this slide guys no, no, no. I would just say 
get out the car and have an ice cream at the side of the road works really well as well. <laughs> Only if you're buying, yes. <laughs> yeah. Always. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, getting out whilst the weather's nice at the moment. Yes, you can get out, have a discussion um, at the side of the road where possible, where you can. And I'm sure lots of people are doing that as well, um, because it's, you know, it's a nice thing to do as well, isn't it? It stretches your legs, eases your back sitting in that car all day. Um, so it has other benefits there as well. Um, OK, so let's have a little look at the next part of here so we've got diary management so chris about uh, you know question for you really i suppose and um howard if you want to chime in at anything how your adr is managing the essentials so fitting in the additional cleaning and training in areas where they maybe their usual test center may not be open yet we've we've tackled communication as being the first port of call for me that's the first port of call on everything is uh, again if you both know what your responsibilities are you'll end up with a better result um and and therefore that will be you know that that will help everybody and so, that form again chris I like it so we, we we've yeah definitely and, and we've tackled it from um a what to expect from your lesson we might be running a bit late because there's more to do so we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch where we can but obviously restrictions of using mobile phones and, and trying to get somewhere um isn't always possible the beginning and end of lesson need to be somewhere where the car could be parked to clean it um rather than you know where some, sometimes you'd you'd pull up across someone's driveway but it, you couldn't stay there um they might have to have a couple of minutes walk back to the front door because we need to have the car somewhere that is is, is able to be cleaned and we can then make best use of, of that um the, you know, the cleaning time mm -hmm. um and and then i think i think all of my instructors actually um have started working to more of a uh, an hour 45 minute gap rather than the half hour that they tended to have before and we're in an area where you know different pupils tend to be you know, a little bit of a distance apart um we've, we've got a bit of greenery around so mm -hmm. You know, we, we've extended those gaps so that you're not under pressure for doing it, because mm. if you're under pressure, it won't be done properly. So yeah. just allowing a bit of that time. Um, but also, I, I think remembering that if the pupil sees you doing the cleaning, they know it's being done and that will yeah. make them feel comfortable. So you, it's not a big secret. They know we're doing it. So, you know, you can engage them in that. And some, I know some people are getting pupils to uh, to, to do some of that cleaning. Um, other people feel that that's their responsibility and they want to make sure it's done uh, done that way um, but it's definitely the communication factor of, mm. of say, saying to them this is what we're doing these are the measures that are in place and you know um, please bear with us because yeah. it's, it's not fun for anyone um, you know it, it's, it's just having to go through the, the process of doing so and if, if you think it's stressful for you for your one lesson we're doing two, three, four lessons a day. Um, <laughs> it's it's you know it's more of an aggro for us than it is for anybody else. But just making sure that that that, that is understood. And I think yeah. from that point of view, um, you know that that's been working well. And and then regarding tests, um, I, I, from the feedback I've been getting, uh, not something I've had to go and do, but uh, the feedback I've been getting is exams have been really accommodating. We've had no issues um everything's you know they, they just want a reasonable state of the car and they're doing the wipe over so you're not expected to get there and, and clean it down yourself necessarily um you know, it's, it's just been a bit of common sense and yeah you know, i think that's what that's what in, in in a way lockdown and covid have brought back is we've got a bit more common sense going around exactly it is it is all based on that and as you say common sense good communication so this is what we're doing um i mean on that have you had uh, you know any many questions from parents pupils have been asking about um you know what measures you're taking or have you even had anyone go so far as to say can i clean the car down before i get in it we there was a definite divide um between the people that were phoning up to say i don't want lessons yet but I need to know when, you know, I need to know what the waiting list is going to be like. I need to know so I can plan ahead still. But I'm I'm not ready for that. And in the same way as with instructors, and I've had this, the conversation more with instructors, it, they needed someone to say it was okay not to. 
Yes. So, you know, some instructors said, I don't want to go back to work. I don't feel ready to. Then, yeah. then don't. Um, you know, find find other ways around things. Um, so side hustles and pivoting your business are the, the two in phrases. Um, but, you know, it, yeah, it's the same with pupils. And, and there were, you know, parents phoning up saying, I'm worried they're going to miss out. If they're not ready, then do you need the extra stress? Um, okay. And and the concentration won't be there, will it? They're not going to get the benefit out of that lesson. Um, and we did on a couple of webinars ago. We did a, like a little quick poll to see um, how many uh, were going back. It was I think we did one up after the uh, how was your first week back? So after ADIs in England it, were able to go back from the fourth of July, we did a webinar I think the following week. How and I hosted it, and just to say. You know, and we did a little question, little poll on screen, and um, there was there was more saying no, I'm not happy about this, than then there were actually saying yeah, I'm happy. So that divide is being noticed by lots of people. Chris, you're right. Um, there is there's sort of those two two areas, aren't there? That I'm not, I'll, you know, I'd like to. I'm not sure about it yet. I think the risks are too much for me personally, my personal circumstances, um, and others which are saying no, I'm going to take precautions and I'm I'm going to go for it. Yeah, well, and, and we're not we're not seeing the ones that don't care. You know, there's this this mythical thing that's promoted in the press of these people who who just don't care. We're we're seeing the people that are making their own assessment of what that risk is, and you know, and then they're making a judgment based on the fact. And we we've seen more of that than I possibly expected. Um, that might be my inner cynic, but um, we're seeing the people that, you know, they're actually interested in, in what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the only call that really stands out was was one that I knew was a driving instructor pretending to be a, a parent inquiring because they wanted to know what, what we were doing. So, um, you know, that's the only call that really stood out as being an extreme version of, you know, what's happening. Everyone else just accepts that as professionals, we're going to do the job that needs doing. Um, so, you, know, you, you get on an aeroplane, wouldn't you? You think, okay, make an assumption that everything, they're, they're, they've cleaned it, they've done this, they've done that. You don't normally ask, a lot of people wouldn't ask the question, would they? Because as you say, an assumption's been made um, and uh, they'll they'll view an, an ADI in the same way sometimes. Yes, and, and if you portray yourself well, that reflects. It's like my mum always you know, said I had to shine my shoes. Yes, um, because it's it, it's that they're the things that do get noticed. Yeah, and people make judgments accordingly. So you know, keep your car clean, and and, and there is an assumption that you're doing your best. And I think you that's all never, we can be asked to do. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell a lot by somebody's shoes. I always notice shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being a bit, I'm, not, I'm going to be a bit sexist here, but being you know female, I love my shoes. But yeah, you can tell um, a lot from the, the little details. You know, whether it's shoes, whether it's whatever it is, but it's those little details. Um, and you know, getting in sometimes if you've done some training in an ADR's car, you know, pre-COVID, um, you know, you can tell where somebody takes pride and they're conscientious. They do in everything they can because their car is immaculate. Um, and you you can tell that and sometimes then you get in another car and maybe less so uh, and you you know it starts you kind of thinking well what else you know it just starts your brain going around you know what else is going wrong here um, yeah. but you know and I'm talking like really quite dirty not ever been cleaned you know I'm not just talking about a bit of surface a couple of like bits on the floor you know um, so yeah um, anything else to add on, on those kids I think the training in new areas um, you, Chris you and I were talking pre, pre this uh, this webinar weren't we and just saying about a positive to come out of that could be where um, you know you've got um, pupils having having to have sort of lessons in different areas and that's a great opportunity, isn't it, to think, OK, well, let's just get some additional experience in there uh, where perhaps you wouldn't have gone out because, you know, you like more of a test centre was offering more slots before all this. Um, and, and test centres, they have got slots of so guys and girls. Keep looking every day, a few times a day if you can. Keep looking. Slots will come about if, you, if you're not seeing them right at this moment. They will. There are some like really early morning ones as well. Again, I know they're not 
probably deemed sometimes the most civilized time of the day but sometimes you know it might be a little bit quieter you might you might like it um pupils might like it so it's an option for you um just discuss that with your pupils really so that's that's a good one um but yeah just to sort of drive in um you know to, to go and explore a little bit further afield um as, as in addition um i think that that that's something which is also not a bad thing yeah i, th I think with you know the test waiting lists are, are clearly going to be high um so you're not as likely to know which test center is going to be the available one so that that was you know my feeling is that we could really have a, an improvement to road safety and road standards if people are being taught to drive to any test center standard um because you don't know where they're going to go and it might be that you find one tomorrow at a different test center and you know that it's that or nothing so you know whether there's going to be a change of perspective because and we're not talking about you know teaching test routes we're talking about the 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 natural leaning towards an area where the test is likely to be um often you know based on location of pupil um but that you might go a little bit further afield for your tests with with that pupil than you would would have done before and therefore um they need to be better versed in in you know the general road conditions that you can come across and i, I think that there could be a, a you know a, i'm all for silver linings there could be a really good silver lining from this in in the way that people are being taught and i've got a funny feeling that instructors or you know that haven't done that before that have been a bit more test center based will suddenly find that it's quite nice quite nice and quite good fun being out on different roads um because you do get to know it you know when you know that the sign around the corner is going to be you know, whichever warning sign before you can see it, um, it takes the fun out of it for me. So, uh, yeah, it, it's quite interesting being out in different areas and the experience factor um, is, you know, it's amazing what you can come across. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's a there's some really valid points you raise there. And if nothing else, you know, it's great. So pupils have got much more experience, they've got new areas. Um, and also, from the ADI's point of view, you know, it's it's something new, isn't it? It's something a bit different. You think, okay, um, you know, that that point of view um, is is also really um, is is also really important. Sometimes going around the same area and you know, it, it can get a little bit tedious. So I I used to find that, and I used to always like to branch out a little bit just just for my own sanity, if nothing else. Um, yeah. so, um, you know, um, so yeah, um, you know, I, I used to love it. I was a bit weird. I used to love it when it used to snow, and you know, when we used to get a bit of snow now and again and things like that. I'd be straight out there, you know, trying to talk with people's back it, out, not cancelling their lessons. You know, no, no, go out there, you know, because it was, it was, it was different. It was exciting. It was something a bit, a bit better. You know, obviously when they. It, the, the ones that are able to, to to do that i'm not talking a beginner necessarily but even even those guys you know um if if you do it in a very you know quietish area and you know you, you can turn something out get something out that for them learning can can come out okay anything else to add on those points there guys before we move on yeah there's one thing I, I think really um the whole industry is a service industry and and ADIs have got to bow down to what the client wants. So if they want to do their test somewhere else, this is going to show up instructors that actually do train on test routes who will say, no, I'm not going to take you there. There's nothing physically stopping them from taking them there. It's a, it puts the instructor out of his comfort zone, and that is a bad reputation to have with any client. You've, you've got Any ADI has got to be prepared to move to different areas to do these tests and as as Chris has said, it does it does open up the um, horizons to the students as well as the instructor as well. But uh, I do feel that there are some instructors that could be doing themselves down by saying, "No, I'm not going to take you further afield." It's an option to discuss with your pupils, isn't it? Um, and to say, "Look, these are the options we could do. We can, you know, stay nearby and hope a test comes up, or we could, that you know." next week or something there's a test over there let's have a little look at that what do you think you know and and you know it's down to you obviously as a business to decide how you're going to recoup any additional costs and things like that but it, it that that's something which is is i know a lot of instructors are considering and they are doing um so um that that's that you know that as you say chris that could be a bit of a silver lining to give them that option yeah definitely 
Okay, right. So let's have a little look at the next one. So managing expectations. This is this is always interesting. It's all good. Um, so still in challenging times. Yep, yeah, and I think it's going to be here for a little while. Yep, yeah, and I think that's a given. So um, in terms of booking new tests and getting those tests rebooked and managing pupils and parents. So have you had any particular instances or or, or, or stories to tell on this one, Chris, or any? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I think with, with regards to this, um, start as you mean to go on. Um, and that's that's the key to, to all of it, is there's been a lot of people, they don't, they just don't realise that the the challenge. So I've been, um, they, you know, they phone up and, and they, they want a lesson yesterday, and they want a test tomorrow, and they don't quite understand why we can't accommodate that. But so I've been taking a moment to say, before we cover you, can I just give you the general update? Because even if I can't fit you in for lessons, at least that you can go away knowing a bit more than, than you do now. And telling them that it's you know, 210,000 tests that have been cancelled and, and that you know, the real situation is going to be that they're going to be looking at Christmas, February even, before they can get a test if they didn't have one on hold. Um, is, is a realistic prediction um, that we don't know. And we don't know that, no, but it's, it's you know. It's, 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 but if you look at the figures, it, mm. it's, it's, it's going to be pushing pushing that way with the fact that they're, you know, they're sort of 70% capacity at best. Um, and there's not less people wanting tests, actually, looking at the, um, you know, the, the, the figures for, for population, there's probably more. Um, we're, we're on an increase so you know they need to be planning for that um, and then assuring them that we're going to do our best for them as to being flexible not necessarily doing lessons every week um, and then one of one of my instructions has moved, the instructors has moved to uh, bi-weekly or even sort of every three weeks uh, doing a lesson especially if they've got private practice that they can you know got a car they can go and drive in um, and and then on other things where we can't fit them in immediately, offering Zoom um, theory training or encouraging them to be getting on with the theory so that we've got good communication going and, and we're showing that we're supporting the whole process, not yeah. just the lessons. Yeah. And, and I, the feedback from that, I, I, I tell you the, the, the biggest bit of feedback, I think, for, for ADIs is the, the number of calls, it, it's probably over half that are saying thank you for taking time to give me that information because i've spoken to x number of instructors already and i was either told sorry i can't fit you in end of discussion or they didn't hear back because instructors are busy um and in a way you know I, we, we've got the luxury of, of me being me being off the road and, and answering calls and that's part of why we're doing it so you know, we're trying to make sure that that they are catered to. It's not easy when when it's it's just you and you're yeah. out there trying to manage that. But maybe having a, a changing your voicemail to to deliver a bit of that information, um, to having having a page on website Facebook that gives that information so you can point people at it, uh, yeah. or a a predetermined text message. So at least you're you're dropping them a text to say, you know, really sorry, things are hectic. If you want putting on the waiting list, just reply waiting list. Um, and then you've got something that's easy to manage, but you're keeping, as, as Howard said, it's reputation. You know, you're keeping that reputation yeah. going as being someone who's communicative. And yeah. you're, you're, you're keeping the side up for, for all instructors in a way. Of, of we're showing that we are professional and informed. And I know we're all professional. Unfortunately, the informed bit has been a challenge. And... You know, we, we're, we're all working day to day with that because things are still changing. So, you know, it's beginning to settle down. We're beginning to get a feel for the pattern of things. But it's OK to tell to tell the customers, do you know what, we're, we're, we're here to support you because we don't know either. Yeah. Um, and, and I think and, that's, and that's been really important. And that sometimes all people need to hear, isn't it? I mean, yeah. just to say that... Um, it's the not knowing and the, the the silence that drives you nuts more than a load of things. So it, it's not hearing anything, you know. And and if you reply, ask somebody a question and they don't come back, it's you know you've asked them for a reason. So as you say, Chris, you know those those 
strategies that you your driving school put in place and i'm sure lots of other people do as well but if the, if you're listening to this and you currently don't then you know you might take something off away from that and 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 put something in place um just just as you say you know point them to a website or point them here or to give a voicemail or or, or just something um just to, to update them and to keep them in the loop and uh, um, that that is that is worth a lot to a lot of people and people appreciate that. And if they're on a waiting list, don't w- worry about putting them on the waiting list thinking, you know, you've got to be all things to all people. Then you put yourself under a great deal of pressure. Um, then, you know, get a waiting list. Tell them there's a waiting list. They've got an option if they want to go on it or they want to go somewhere else. Then that, that is absolutely their choice. Um, and uh, if they choose to wait, then you that, that's a great thing. You've got people then to go back to. So um, I think having that kind of wait list there is, is, a, is a very good thing because then you've got people's names, you've got their people's phone numbers and, you know, you, you've got potential bookings there, haven't you? Rather than yeah. you just them just dropping off the end and you've lost them. So the thing, I think that's, that's a really good uh, So the other, the other thing that I think is um, re- really important is um, ADIs working together. So if you are on your on your own, um, you know, independent and, and you haven't got those connections around you, by having a waiting list, you can always say to other instructors, or if you get a gap, give me a shout. And then, for example, if you end up self-isolating because of, you know, one, one of your pupils or, you know, um, you, or yourself get, uh, one of your household members gets a, a positive test and, you know, you end up in that situation, you've got someone who might be able to cover some tests for you. Mm. You've got so, some, uh, some local support. Or, or someone to just phone up and have a chat with, which is equally important. Yeah. Um, so it's a good way of working together and developing uh, a, a community and um, you know a local support structure, which is always the number one disadvantage to the job that that we quote is it can be a bit lonely. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's why I ended up with a driving school because we we wanted. We, like, we miss the team feel. We miss the people to bounce off of when we're having a bad day. Um, yeah. And, and so we, we kind of, yeah, that's where Ian and I started from and it's grown from there. And, and that's what the instructors value the most is that they've got someone on the end of the phone. Um, yeah. So a waiting list is a nice way to help develop that and support support those people around you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm full agreement with that. And and just to further on from that, you know, that that's why, um, you know, national associations such as us and, and your local associations are more sort of on the ground, more local issues, you know, find out where they are. I mean, a lot of them are still operating. They're doing a lot of the Zoom chats and things like that. Um, and so, so, you know, do find out where these where these places are, um, you know, ask, ask questions, ask us, we might be able to help you if, if well, you know. Uh, there is actually a list of them in the back of the training magazine every month. Yeah. 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 One, every, yeah, one near you somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you're not sure, ask, um, and we can hopefully direct you. So there, there are, um, lots and lots of different, you know, lots of good things that can come out of this situation. Um, and as you say, Chris, you know, that, that waiting list is the first step perhaps in that, road to developing a new strategy for your business to to you know for, for cover for a bit of more support sometimes um and as you say none of us know if we're going to get a positive test or we're going to have to self-isolate we don't know so um and and you know it could be it could happen to any one of us so um we need to make sure that there is something in place yeah. so brilliant brilliant points thank you um anything else to add on those guys no, I, th- I'm, I think we've covered it. We can. Okay, okay. Let's have a little look at the self isolation bits, and because because Chris, you were we've had lots of questions on the um, ADI support, haven't we, Howard? And uh, over the over the weeks, lo- lots and lots of questions. And um, Chris, you've you've been still getting these, aren't you? I believe. Yeah, and they're seeing them on Facebook. And the problem is, at the beginning, it's really clear because it's in black and white, and everyone's working from the black and white. But yeah. then it's that you start to get the grays coming in and then yeah. you get the mis- the misinformation coming in and the misunderstandings coming in. And do you know what? E- even I'm, and I like to think I'm fairly on top of this, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused um, now. So I'm going to be listening intently with, with exactly you know what, what what's being said because I think a bit of clarity on it sometimes, taking a step back and looking again at that black and white of you know what the rules are um because some of it is down to us having to look after our pupils um and make sure we're doing 
the right thing and being seen to do the right thing. Mm. So, so yeah, no, there's a lot of that confusion going on because you don't know what's it's not important to you until it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is information which is from gov.uk, um, you know, the NHS uh, um, information um, that they're putting out there. And we've got another couple of slides um, from that page as well. So this, this is what it's saying. Um, so we understand what self-isolation is. That's I think that's pretty much given. Um, so the NHS also advises when to self-isolate. So but that, as you say, this is all kind of black and white. This is fine. Um, we get this. Um, that's simple. But as you say, Chris, it's when the greys start coming in. Um, so we could have an example of, um, you know, a, a dad. Um, I think you had an example the other day, yep. didn't you? Um, there, was, there was a, um, a pupil's father had a positive test. So um, the pupil got in touch and the pupil had to self-isolate for uh for 14 days mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, dad who had the positive test is 10 days isolation um and the question was then how does that affect the instructor do they have to respond to, to that in any way okay so i mean the isolation is there isn't it to help save lives ultimately um and so if the there is somebody in the household, because all the information we've been given out, um, are Howard um, as DIA and and as or the other groups and ASP, everyone um, has been, you know, look, ring the people beforehand to find out how they are. Maybe reassure them that you know you're you're okay. You you know you've not been around anyone known to be um, positive or or in in displaying symptoms that you know of um and you're going to proceed on that basis if you're both happy but um the other question is you know is there anyone else in the household from either instructor or the pupil that has uh, symptoms or has tested positive so um again if that is then the advice is to self-isolate isn't it so if you if you are having if you are in that situation so what was the what was the, the the thing so the dad had the positive test yes but the pupil was obviously within the same it was their son daughter they're within the same household um yes. so it was the the but now the pupils having to self-isolate from is it 14 days from when the symptoms first all appeared from the original person that was sick isn't it it's uh, um, yes yeah, it was 10, but now I think it's up to 14, isn't it? So yeah. um, so the pupils then having to self-isolate for that time to see whether they start to develop symptoms. So obviously no training could be, on, you know, face-to-face -face training could be could be going ahead um, yeah, or should with, be going ahead. So that's with that pupil. But the, the question came of did the instructor have to self-isolate? And my understanding is no. If the pupil had been tested positive, um, then they might have got contacted by NHS test and trace, at which point they would have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it is a tricky one. <laughs> this is where we start getting into the grey area. Yeah. And, um, then, and, I, and I say, I, as I understand it, and unless you get contacted by test and trace, you only have to isolate for household members um is, is my is my understanding so in, unless you're specifically told um and that's yeah. where this this test and trace system comes in absolutely if you're specifically told by them that you've been in contact with somebody and you have to self-isolate then black and white we're back into black and white aren't we but um apart from that um yeah it, it starts getting very interesting and gray um howard what's your opinion on that one I was disappeared. How's done a runner? <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult question. That's what it is. Yeah, sorry guys, I've got things happening here at the moment from Northern Ireland that I'm trying to deal with as well. Sorry about that. Okay, um, yeah. oh, no worries. I just you're, you're completely right. Through. I mean, the situation with the self isolation. What you've said there, Chris, you're absolutely right. What you said, the pupil itself is. You take it in terms of like chucking a stone in the pond and watching the ripples. If the person is the first ripple that reports to you and says they are they they've got they're positive, then yes, you have to isolate. If it goes down to the next ripple, then that you don't have to isolate, but the pupil does. So you're absolutely right what you said. Okay, so if then the next step would be if the pupil was positive, so you saw yeah. them 
two days ago and they yeah. get in touch and say yesterday i had a i went and had a positive test um at that point does the instructor need to isolate yes and the instructor also has to tell all the people they've been in touch with for the last seven days as well is that through test and trace or is that uh, not necessarily, no. well yes it would be if, if they've been involved with the dvsa yes but okay. if the, no one's been to test and no dvsa thing has been involved yet then the instructor professionally really should be telling their their uh, pupils that they've been in contact with someone who is covid positive and te tests are available to instructors, aren't they? So if you're yes, in that situation, are, yeah, 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 they can, are. And and I know I know some instructors that were busy manning the stations um, where the the testing was being done. Um, you know, they couldn't be in the traffic, so they went and directed it instead. Um, well, and yeah, they 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 said it's a very simple process. So, oh, it is. I've had it myself. I had to have it done myself because uh, yeah. back in the early days, I had eight of what was then the eleven eight of the eleven symptoms. And I had to go and have one done at Ipswich. And it is a very simple test. My unfortunately came out negative, despite the fact I had eight symptoms, I was still negative. So it's, it's a very strange disease. Um, yeah. And this is why we've got to be very careful that we don't think, oh, it won't matter if I don't report it, because you can actually be a carrier without having any symptoms showing. But, you know, you, you they say about the rashes on your feet, etc. cetera, the, the welts on the feet, as they call it, and the, the thing with the um, the, void, the the throat and all the stuff that are sort of smaller types of, um, of uh, the more the more chronic rather than acute. Um, those are telltale signs. And we're getting more and more information. Again, I go back to King's College. They seem to be coming up with the stuff first of all. And um, we're going back to to information that is coming through all the time and i urge all instructors um if they're not on the nhs app to download the c19 app which is the king's college and zoe's app and in that app there is information that gets brought in research that is put out in that app daily and you actually sign to daily um, and the daily that you go into it and it will tell you information. You'll find that information they put up there tends to be news headlines two weeks later. Right. So That's the situation we're at the moment is that um, the the R number right now is now bouncing around most of the country between 0.8 and 1. And the areas are in lockdown. It's actually higher than that. And that's why they're in lockdown. Yes. It's, I, th I think that's the, the thing, isn't it? Remembering that it's regional as well. Um, yes. And, you know, I've, I've, it's that funny thing of um, uh, the lovely Carol Greenwood sent me a message saying, I, can, uh, I can't have uh, one of my friends round to my house to, uh, to have a cup of tea, but I can take them out for a driving lesson. Yeah. Um, so it is keeping an eye on your local regional uh, information and what you are or not, are not allowed to do yeah um, in, in that area is, is really important it is but you also have to consider this that you're driving your car the inside of your car is a driving environment and you've got to keep that environment as clean as possible yes we know about the deep clean each week we know about the sanitizing but it's also the people getting into that vehicle the instructors really need to know what that student's done in the last week. So every single time you're going to see that student, there should be a phone call 24 hours before you're going to meet that person and say, have you had anybody from uh, Test and Trace come to you? Have you come in contact with people you know that are, that are positive, etc.? The AGI needs to know because inside the four windows and four doors of that vehicle is an environment they've got to try and keep. They can't keep it clinically clean, but they've got to try and keep it as clean as they can. So they need to have the mindset of, is the own car environment going to inf infect or affect their own household? And can the instructor's household affect the environment of the car that other people can get in from outside, which they can then take away and infect their environment? It's the environments of the households that have got to be protected. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's just it's it's important to remember the bigger picture. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. And on our um, COVID app, uh, so our toolkit we've got, our return to work toolkit, we've got stuff in there which can help the ADI uh, assess the situations for risk um, in terms of who they train and if they make the phone call and they hear certain things in the conversation, they can look at the risk assessment sheet and think, right, I'm going to have to give these people a miss for a while. Either because the instructor has got someone who might need shielding or the people who are going to try and get into the car have got people that need shielding. So it's a situation where you've got to look at the risk assessment of how serious it's going to be uh, in terms of how much you're going to corrupt your own environment of your space in your car. That's that's the what we call the um, conduit. The car environment is the conduit that can spread this from one side to the other. And that's what we're very careful of. Hmm. Um, I've just moved a slide on there, you know, just to share that information from the NHS there about um you know, telling people um, you've been in close contact with uh, the other symptoms. So that's the, that official information. Um, one question we've had is um, a term um, they call long tail symptoms. Um, yeah. And how do we deal with people with long tail symptoms, which is where they've had the virus um, and they've had, um, they're still suffering, um, you know, a long time later from awful health complications or conditions um you know a lot of people say they still have breathing problems and they have all sorts of medical issues um that have stemmed from having covid19 um so it's um once they've had the virus i mean we still don't know officially yet whether somebody can recatch it as i understand or you know get it a second time round. i haven't heard that um whether you know that they've had that confirmed because I know you can get antibody tests to say that yes, you've either had it or you haven't. Um, but whether you can get to catch it again, um, I I couldn't clarify that at the moment because I don't think they know. Um, but in terms of these long tail symptoms, um, there's there's a whole list of people reporting things, and you've probably seen some on the news yourselves. Um, and I suppose as long as they are as far as you everyone is aware that they're, they're happy that that you know that to carry on with the lesson and you know that they might have had a test recently to say that they're negative or you know that they're that's that that's okay um to i mean you're going to have to have a conversation with them obviously over the phone or via a zoom or something like that to to limit that close contact uh, with them but just to have that conversation to understand and how you can maybe better understand what the, what the conditions are and, and uh, what the limitations are have you know they might have a you know a lot of people suffering from not just breathing problems but fatigue so driving could be a real issue um then that then starts you could then start going a step further into thinking well are you actually okay and fit to drive and do you need to inform dvla of any particular health conditions so um you know that, that it, it starts really unraveling at a rate so um, thank you for that question. It's an excellent one, um, and it's and it starts getting big quite you know quite big quite quickly. But I think initially, if you are in that situation, then speak to that pupil, understand what they've what they've got, um, you know, so you can best help them and determine whether they they are okay and fit to drive. Um, seek advice. You can come to us, ask us first um, if if we can help with that um or maybe from dvla there is a medical uh, information on the dvla website as well or gov.uk about driving um and um you know go go from there really and just to see it could be that somebody's sort of feeling breathless or they're getting tired so you might want a shorter lesson which some people are doing anyway aren't they to, to limit that contact so i think you'd have to take that one by a case-by-case -case basis at the moment and this is anything any any other you guys wanted to add on that? No, I think it's just important to remember that that person will have been tested. So you know, if it if it is, um, we we know the, um, the incubation periods and, and everything else that you know it, it, if they've done what they should have done, they are you know their residual symptoms. But as you say, if they then affect driving or ability to conduct the lesson, then mm. that's that's something that we should always be dealing with, but it's a really important question um, to, to make sure that it's being being addressed and and acknowledged. And, and again, a, a silver lining from um, you know from the situation that um, 
that the you know there's there's something that uh, that we can revisit and remember that people have challenges in their life that we can we can help accommodate yeah absolutely so okay thank you for that question um another question about you know how lessons and tests could be carried out when the weather gets a bit more cold when apparently they're saying covid could be you know the conditions are more favorable to for covid it seems to like cold and wet conditions um and also you know windows open for the duration of the lesson um so it's it's things like um you can get those kind of shields can't you to just to pop on the outside of your car just to kind of prevent that rain from coming in um anything like that we always say look just be belt and braces about this and just cover your backsides um as, as much as you can anything like that speak to the insurance company just to absolutely cover it off that that you know if you were involved god forbid in any any you know claim that they might say oh actually you know you've got this on your car i mean something like that from a real common sense point of view shouldn't make a difference but always ask and always cover it um so um in terms of the windows being open things like that but uh, you know and, unless the guidance changes by then which i doubt you know we're still going to need that so the heater's going to need to be on you're going to need to tell them and obviously again like the ac not on recirculate bringing in sort of fresh air from outside the, the having having you know the um the maybe sometimes people are having just the front windows open at the moment have the back windows open as, as well just to kind of get the air flow through the car um, and just making sure that um you know you, you're doing everything as you can wrapping up warm bringing an extra coat with you um and things like that sorry my um bit of noise in the background here do, do apologize um so you know it, it and it's just a case of again like chris is saying advising pupils advising parents anyone just to say look this is the advice that you know bring bring something warm, bring something waterproof you know don't don't be tempted to stand under the same umbrella at the side of the road i'm sure no one would do that um and and just to and just to follow that common sense at, at, at the moment i mean obviously as as, as this develops um, we hope to have a bit more information on on you know any changes hopefully for the better um i've also got a, a something a message being left on here as well which i've answered on there um, could I mention the King's College app again? Uh, you can get it from the App Store. It's called COVID Symptoms Study, and it's the one that's done by Zoe Global Limited. And this is the one that's, that's a, 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 in association with King's College Hospital in London, um, who are pretty much up there with the, most of the research has taken place on the COVID-19 studies. They've been working alongside um, Oxford University, and that's the one you can actually register to. And and send in your state of health daily and all, the lot of stuff the research as it is done and new things are found are usually at least once or even twice a week are put onto that app and you can read through it and uh, you'll probably find in sort of six ten ten days later that's the news headlines and you've already you already know about it already so i've been using this since right from the start so for four months i've been using it and it's a very very useful resource for me it really is Hmm. okay thanks howard um okay um in terms of there's one more question on at the moment um someone um says i have not fully returned to work yet but do windows have to be fully open the more ventilation in the car the better um so ventilation and fresh air is key so um if you can yes um by all means as open as as you can you know reasonably do so we're not just talking like a cracking them open an inch at the top you know they do need to be open um, a considerable way down if not all the way um but obviously depending on the type of road you're on you know you drive down doing a 70 up a dual carriageway you you know you, you've got more airflow coming in the car anyway so you can pull them up a bit you know it's that kind of common sense approach with it there isn't any kind of exact guidance on how far the windows should be open but it's always that ultimately our ultimate question how much ventilation is actually flowing through this car right now if not much um you know open the windows more or if you're stationary for a few minutes or you're going to be for a, for a few minutes to discuss something then you know find somewhere safe appropriate to park and pop outside the car and and, and have you have a chat there okay so um we're gonna just start to wrap up the session now with any last questions that come in 
I think we've answered them all so far. Um, and is there anything else in the meantime from either of you guys that you wanted to, to add or ask? No, I, I think you know, the most important thing, as I you know, said a few times, is, is communication and keeping yourself safe. Yeah. I think you know, if, if people focus on that, then you know, everything will be, will be good um, and we can deal with things you know, on individual case-by-case -case basis as you go. Without the good foundations and a good framework, that's when it all goes wrong. And you know, that, they're the people that I've, I've had getting in touch and saying, help. Um, I'm sure that's what the DIA are having happen as well. Is you know, it's it's almost a bit too late at that point when it's gone wrong. So put yeah. put the good foundations in place as as early as you can. And um, yeah. to you know, to people like Graham who aren't aren't yet back on the road, um, just just think about it, work it through. And if if you've got someone local who is already working, have a chat with them about what they didn't expect, because mm. that's really really going to help. Um, because it is it's you know it's the stuff that you didn't think was going to be a problem. Um, yeah. so. so it's it, it, as you say yeah it's just having that information and for those people who are a little bit on the fence whether they're going to return back to other workers the ADI or the pupil come back to lessons it, again it's it's having that up-to-date information and 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 then that way you can make your best decisions based on your personal circumstances um so yeah okay a couple more questions just come in uh, will tests be cancelled if there's torrential rain um not that we know of, no, um, but obviously there will be some, you know, again, with, with the windows, there needs to be ventilation. The, the, the car generally is, is moving on the test, as, as you know, you know, one, one um, reversing exercise um, and the car is generally moving for the, for the remainder of the time. So, again, have the, have the maybe the air coming in through, through the vents, um, fresh air coming in um, and, and just have those, those windows open um, as much as, as you reasonably can do um, is, is the, um, the answer. Um, have they started any standard checks? yet um no not at the moment uh, i don't think um so we are um they, they're, the devious they are, are working very hard behind the scenes actually to to get all of this up and up and running um so i don't think um anyone's had one as yet but um that that's that's you know part right. threes are taking place at the moment that's all yeah so so yeah um so it, it they will they will re restart they will happen um but yeah obviously dvsa um they are working hard as i say behind the scenes just to get everything sorted um as and, and, and in a fair way as they can for everybody um so thank you all for your patience with everything um and um yeah they'll, they'll continue to work on that to resume a normal services as quickly as they reasonably can Okay, right. Well, thank you so much, um, Chris and Howard and uh, everybody else for listening in. Um, it's been a really useful session for, for us and I hope, hope for everyone listening in as well. And um, thank you so much for your time, Chris, for sharing your, um, you know, your, your best practice, your insights, your stories, your questions from, from uh, your driving school. Um, great, great to hear from a you know from a driving school and seeing what you're doing um and um hopefully that's been um helpful for for the listeners thank you for inviting me along to do so it's been great okay thank you so much all right then thank you chris thank you howard and um thank you everybody the, this will be posted up on the um, academy probably by uh, next week or so um so if you missed it um you know or you want to listen to it you won't know if you missed it until you listen to it but if you if you want to hear it again um it will be up there um in the next few days okay so stay safe everybody don't forget um come and ask us questions at dia if you need to ask anything and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll help you out. Okay. Take care, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.